Hello viewers and welcome to yet another Warhammer 40,000 Conquest video production. My name is Mitch and I am the Hive Tyrant. Today I'm spectating a game between Dan Napolitano and uh, John Wesley. Dan is going to be playing uh, Baharoth, an Eldar warlord, and John is going to be playing Space Marines. As our first play of the game, we see a Warlock Destructor uh, to Planet 1 from Dan. We see a 10th Company Scout from John at Planet 2, uh, at which uh, we see a Baharoth's Hawks deployed opposite that uh, 10th Company Scout. So at the moment, looks like uh, Dan is going to be winning command on Planet 1 and 2, as well as Planet 4, as we see him put down a Vashia Trailblazer opposite a Rogue Trader, which is going to be very, very clutch, as he's opposing and uh, beating that resource-boosting Rogue Trader. It looks like both players have passed. They're currently figuring out where to place their Warlords. Uh, taking a look at cards and resources, Baharoth is completely out of resources. He still has four cards in hand, whereas our Space Marine player still has five resources and five cards. So even though he doesn't have much of a combat presence on the board at the moment, he's still got plenty of events at his disposal, potentially. Uh, lots of resources to fund things like drop pot assault, all sorts of nasty tricks like that, eager recruits, and certainly plenty of cards. Our first planet is going to be Iridial, so that's going to be leaving play pretty early on. Uh, Baharoth, of course, one of his great strengths is the fact that he's mobile, so we could easily see him sent to the first planet if he's not interested in winning command, but the presence of that Warlock Destructor is probably a pretty significant deterrent for Kato. Looks like the earliest win we could possibly see is on planet number three, and uh, our players are still picking where exactly they are intending to send their warlord. Baharoth is all about mobility, so this Baharoth's Hawks has a mobile. It doesn't actually have uh, any attack power at the moment, but as soon as it's present uh, alongside Baharoth, it can take care of that. Looks like both of our players have chosen to go to planet number five, which is Farron. Uh, the winner gets to t route a target non-warlord unit, so it looks like uh, there's going to be quite a command victory for our Eldar player. Uh, he's going to get a lot of cards and resources. Looks like our Space Marine is actually not winning any cards or resources at all. So Dan ends up pulling in a grand total of four cards and one resource. We'll have to see what happens during the combat phase regarding drop pot assaults and eager recruits. Seeing as how our Space Marine still has five cards and five resources in hand, uh, so long as he can pull out something to destroy that Warlock Destructor, it's entirely possible uh, we might see him pull this battle out of his ass. Uh, we're currently figuring out what our Baharoth player is going to do in regard to the mobile keyword. Taking a look at our other planets, planet number two is Elowith, which is search the top three cards for one card upon winning that battle. Planet three is Yavarn, puts units into play. Planet four is Aatrox Prime. And uh, Planet 5, of course, is Farron, which routes non-warlords. So our Space Marine doesn't have much of a combat presence on the board. Kato doesn't have any really squishy units to kill off or snipe. And we can see that our Eldar player has just basically filled the board with mobile units from the Tau Trailblazer to that Baharoth's Hawks. And it looks like we do see Baharoth mobile over to Aatrox Prime so that he's going to be able to take a uh, pot shot at either Kato or perhaps whatever ends up in headquarters if he drop pods in, say, uh, some sort of space marine. If he eager recruits, the eager recruit lives and goes to HQ. So that could be a potentially nasty little ability. Looks like John is going to abandon the first planet, no actions whatsoever, and that means uh, our Baharoth player is going to win that first planet. There are no damaged units to remove resources from, and this Warlock Destructor goes to the HQ, so it's forced reactions after the deploy phase begins. You have to pay a resource or discard it. We'll have to see uh, what he ultimately ends up doing in regard to that. Whether he wants that to be part of Baharoth's uh, train or not. 
Looks like we do have a combat going on at Aatrox Prime. The Vashia Trailblazer is going to take a swing at the Rogue Trader. Again, always good to save your Warlord's attacks until the last possible moment, uh, just because you don't want to get caught by... Um, you know, a drop pot assault or anything like that. We do see an eager recruit interplay on Dan's side, or on John's side of the battlefield uh, in that action window. Let's see if it takes a swing at the Trailblazer or at Baharoth. Looks like no actions from Baharoth, and the eager recruit does take a swing at that Vashia Trailblazer. Probably extremely important to try and kill that, just to try and uh, slow down some of that Eldar uh, economic advantage. We see an Empower 2 shield card discarded by our 7 cards in hand Eldar player to try and preserve that Vashia Trailblazer. Definitely makes sense, seeing as how he's already sunk 1 card and 2 resources into it. And of course, Baharoth responds by taking a swing at that eager recruit and at the present moment we still have four resources four cards in hand for john one resource seven cards for dan our Cato player um, we do see a drop pot assault now that Baharoth is exhausted. He's going to go ahead and check the top six cards of his deck for a card, and we'll have to see what Space Marine ally uh, John ultimately ends up putting into play. The remaining five cards are going to be put on the bottom of his deck in the order of that player's choosing. Looks like we see an Honored Librarian, which is pretty significant. I suppose if we have a second drop pod, now might not be the worst time to play it, just to ensure that that Honored Librarian can't get hit directly. At the present moment, Baharoth doesn't really have anything available to him as a faction and signature squad with which to boost up his combat abilities. The Honored Librarian takes a swing, of course, at Baharoth, and we see the discarding of the signature attachment, the Shining Blade, which is going to absorb three of that damage. That typically allows Baharoth to attack adjacent planets, as opposed to attacking conventionally. Uh, kind of maligned by a lot of players, so not surprising to see that ditched as a shield card. Our Space Marine player still has three cards in hand. Let's see if Baharoth ultimately decides to retreat, and once again, Aatrox Prime is going to be uh, what is being contended here. It looks like Dan is ultimately going to retreat, so he is going to be giving up this battle, and that means our Space Marine player is going to be the victor, and John, of course, very wisely chooses to target the HQ. The Warlock Destructor takes one damage, Baharoth takes one damage, putting him at two, and uh, let's see if the Vashia Trailblazer is destroyed. We've yet to see a shield card discarded. And it looks like the Vashia Trailblazer is gone. It looks like Kato returns to HQ, and the Baharoth's Hawks uh, returns to HQ as well. I suppose that must have uh, been mobilized to the first planet at uh, one point, or at some point. Uh, there's no action from Dan during the headquarters phase, and at the present moment looks like our new first planet is going to be Elowith, which uh, our Space Marine has his 10th Company Scout there. That Honored Librarian is sitting at the third planet, and uh, our new fifth planet is now Taurus. So our Space Marine player and Eldar player are both tied for number of units, but as soon as there's some sort of discrepancy, any battle won there is going to allow a player to pull in three resources and three cards. We see uh, veteran brother Maxos hit the table for the Space Marine player. He still has three resources and four cards remaining, and he ultimately decides to place that at planet four. Currently, uh, Baharoth has one icon of each color, which means he can win as early as the turn after next. Our Space Marine player could win on our third planet, but it's looking... Uh, kind of up in the air. I suppose during our deploy phase, the Warlock Destructor remains in play, which means that our Baharoth player has four resources and eight cards, relative to Kato's three resources, four cards. 
Veteran Brother Maxos, of course, is going to allow a ton of Space Marine units to just be put into play during action speed during the combat phase, which could be fantastic. He's sitting at Farin, which allows non-Warlord units to be routed, so as soon as a you know combat takes place there, uh, any subsequent planet deployment he can really interfere with. So at the present moment, looks like Dan is considering his options in regard to where they're going to be committing warlords. Certainly there's nothing small and vulnerable for Cato uh, to try and snipe off on the board to gain all the more resources to fund uh, veteran brother Maxos. It looks like we see the remainder of Dan's resources invested in a Wild Rider squadron at planet number two, so this could opportunistically shift during combat, uh, hopefully after Dan has attacked, to either the first planet or the third planet to try to win there. The initiative is presently in the hand of Dan or in John's hands, so I suppose something we could see is Baharoth deployed to planet number three, that Wild Rider squadron shift in, and then take a swing at the Honored Librarian, or, you know, uh, an eager recruit could interfere with that, a drop pot assault could interfere with that by disallowing that unit to uh, be moved there. We do see a Sicarius is Chosen played at planet number three. The Wild Rider Squadron does successfully take one point of damage. It does get reeled to Aatrox Prime. So currently, um, Baharoth is going to have to chew through that three damage, three hit points Sicarius is Chosen prior to being able to attack that Honored Librarian, which seems like a big problem, even though... Um, uh, even though Baharoth had a significant economic advantage during the first turn, it's suddenly looking like he doesn't really have that anymore. So at the present moment, three different planets uh, are being won command-wise, and our players are selecting their warlords at the moment. So no resources, seven cards for Baharoth, which means he doesn't have any income at the moment to fund combat tricks. It looks like Baharoth could maybe go to planet number three, um, that Wild Rider Squadron could easily run away, maybe to Planet 2, so Baharoth could go to Planet Number 1. He could try and push his advantage, while he still has one, for a very early game win. Kato is probably going to end up at maybe Planet Number 2, or maybe Planet Number 5, just to try and... Uh, win resources. I suppose it would make sense to try and send him to planet number five to defend Taurus, just because the Space Marine player does currently have more units, and that would be a, a damn shame for him to allow our Eldar player to uh, win back a little bit of an economic uh, foothold. So both of our players are still picking where to go. Dan is ready. Both players have chosen, so Cato does end up going to Taurus, as I predicted. He certainly wants to prevent uh, that from being captured. And of course, Baharoth goes to Planet 4, taking full advantage of his mobility. So at the present moment, we're going to see our Space Marine player win command at three separate planets. Baharoth is only going to be winning two resources at one planet, but that is very important because he's going to net two resources and zero cards. Cards. And seeing as how he already has seven cards in hand, he definitely needs something to fund combat tricks. Cato ends up uh, winning four cards and two resources, putting him at two resources, seven cards. So he has at least something uh, to pay for maybe putting another unit into play with veteran brother Maxos. This is probably a pretty good opportunity for our Space Marine player to snipe off our veteran brother here. It looks like at the beginning of combat, uh, we're checking for mobile at the moment. This uh, 10th Company Scout is going to be going unopposed. Our Wild Rider Squadron is almost certainly going to be... Well, I suppose it doesn't need to shift away from where it's currently at because there's no uh, planet or there's no battle taking place here, so it's fine for the moment. I would assume our Space Marine player is going to win the battle at the first planet, um, absolutely uncontested. Well, it looks like 
we see a pass of actions from John. We see a mid-combat Wild Rider Squadron shift, and we see the zero-cost signature event, Cry of the Wind, after a unit moves from one planet to another, move that unit to an adjacent planet. So the Wild Rider Squadron is able to move two different planets, and it's actually uh, up against that 10th Company Scout. So it looks like this first battle could, in all likelihood, end up going to our... Um, Baharoth player, if we don't have a drop pot assault or anything like that, um, it looks like John is going to be attacking the Wild Rider squadron, and he does have the initiative token. We'll have to see how many shield cards, um, that our Baharoth player has in hand, just because this could make a big difference being able to snag this victory here if he could potentially win on our following round uh that could be absolutely fantastic in that he could avoid sicarius is chosen and we do see a the fury of sicarius played uh in response to that 10th company scout so probably a very wise move by john just to make sure that baharoth is going to have to deal with all of this nasty stuff out on the board but we do actually see a gift of isha from our baharoth players the wild rider squadron returns to play after being destroyed outright by that attack it is going to be discarded started um, at the end of the phase, but that means that it is going to win this combat in all likelihood at the first planet. So it looks like Dan, our players are figuring out if they have any actions here, it looks like Dan is going to swing for a grand total of three at that one hit point, 10th Company Scout, and he does not uh, opt to discard a Talisarian Tempest Blade. No resources left in his hand, so that means no eager recruits, no drop pod assaults, and that Wild Rider Squadron manages to win the battle. So not only is Baharoth going to be able to search the top three cards of his deck for a card to add to his hand, which he's doing presently, putting the other two at the bottom of his deck in the uh, order of his choosing, but um, yeah, he's going to win this planet, and then it's probably going to be all in for this second planet here. The Wild Rider Squadron is essentially going to just be discarded at the end of the phase. We haven't seen any kind of mobile uh, mobilization from Baharoth or his Hawks. The Warlock Destructor remains in place. So we are going to see a battle at this you know, uh, at this planet, and in you know, in all honesty, if uh, Baharoth wins this battle, it would probably be a bad idea for him to rout an enemy unit just because he's going to want that HQ nice and empty to hopefully win the game uh, on Yavarn here. So. This is looking pretty grim for John, just because so many nasty Space Marine units, in all likelihood, might not be doing much of anything. Um, it's just all going to be up to what the players are going to be able to put into play at Yavarn. The Baharoth's Hawks, without the assistance of another Cry of the Wind, aren't going to be able to shift over to the new planet number one. And of course, the Warlock Destructor is very much going to be sitting there at the third planet, so that might end up getting destroyed uh, during the deploy phase. We do see an Iron Halo discarded to spare veteran brother Maxos, taking two points of damage from the swing of Baharoth. And now, Veteran Brother is going to be able to attack in return. I would imagine we'll see this unit retreat, just so that he can uh, return alongside Kato to Yavarn next turn to try to prevent a win. But we shall see. At the present moment, Captain Kato still has five cards in hand. He does have initiative, and our Eldar player has six cards in hand. Neither player has any resources remaining. Veteran Brother is exhausted, and he's going to take a swing at the Baharoth's Hawks. So he's still going to have an opportunity to retreat at the end of combat, and he does manage to kill those Hawks, which is kind of a big deal, because next turn, initiative would be in the hands of our Eldar player, and if he could have gone mobile to planet number two during combat, and then cry of the wind to our new planet number one, uh, he'd have been able to attack for three if Baharoth was there. So that's actually a pretty big difference. Uh, Dan, of course, is choosing to stay, and John is trying to decide whether or not he wants to stay. 
I can't really see any benefit whatsoever from John staying. This warlock destructor, I would assume, is almost certain to eventually destroy him. I don't really think he serves to gain anything by victory here, by, you know, uh, the best case scenario would be maybe winning the battle just so that he could rout the Warlock Destructor, but then that in and of itself would be detrimental just because it would be another unit to join Baharoth's retinue and then wind up at the new first planet. So it looks like uh, John decides to stay. I'm not exactly sure what his thoughts are there. The Warlock Destructor swings for three. A drop pod assault gets discarded. Um... So veteran brother Maxos ends up only taking one point of damage. Maybe he's going to try to put as much damage on Baharoth as possible to, yeah, shoot for a bloodying. So he swings for two at Baharoth. And let's see if our uh, Eldar player has enough shield cards. It looks like he ends up dealing two points of damage to Baharoth, who of course gets an opportunity to swing back. And unless there's a shield card, then... uh. Baharoth isn't going to be able to do much. I suppose something that John could be considering is that during the next round, if Baharoth is very close to being bloodied, it won't take much punishment to banish him from the planet, so that even if he were to play another copy of Baharoth's Hawks, as soon as the Warlord is bloodied and forced away into the HQ, uh, it loses that attack bonus and essentially becomes... Uh, worthless. So let's see what happens here. It looks like no actions at all from John. And is Dan going to be attacking? All right, so Dan does take a swing. Actually, I suppose he spends his uh, combat action to retreat. So I kind of envisioned... I don't see why he didn't take a swing at veteran brother Maxos. Um, so I suppose that's me. I guess he was just playing it safe. He must be intending to get rid of his Warlock Destructor regardless. Uh, veteran Brother Maxos, of course, does retreat, and I think that is probably not a great outcome for our Baharoth here. And Baharoth also decides to rout that Honored Librarian, which means that this is really setting a... Dan up into a fantastic position to, you know, deploy all three of these guys to the first planet, and it, it seems like Dan's choice here is probably going to come back and bite him in the ass. Uh, Captain Cato Sicarius was not able to trigger Taurus, judging from the, uh, the discussion they were having there, just because he's got uh, four units compared to, I suppose, three... Um, for our Eldar player. And of course, Wild Rider Squadron leaves play. During the deploy phase, the Warlock Destructor um, does not get saved. So I think the outcome of that match probably determined a lot to do with our game, whether that allows uh, John to kind of come back. I'm not exactly sure. Kind of remains to be seen. But I think Daniel, in all likelihood, may have just cost himself the victory in this game. We do see a Warlock Destructor at Yavarn, our new first planet. So if Baharoth manages to win this, it's all going to go to him. Our new fifth planet happens to be Karnath, which can trigger the battle ability of another planet in play. So that could be Taurus. If he has very few resources, it could be routing a target non-warlord unit, or it could be Aatrox or Yavarn. And of course, seeing as how that's planet number five, uh, that's probably not going to make a monumental difference. At the present moment, we see two resources and seven cards for our Eldar player. We see one resource, five cards for our Space Marine player. We see another copy of Sicarius is Chosen played to planet two, which targets the Warlock Destructor. We'll see if it does take a point of damage, and it gets pulled away. It looks like we see a Cry of the Wind, the second copy and only remaining copy of that signature event, target the Warlock Destructor. So Sicarius' Chosen moves units, and Cry of the Wind moves units again. So the Warlock Destructor returns to Planet 1. Even though that's sitting at the first planet, uh, there's not a lot of resources left for our Eldar player, and... Uh, 
and it looks like our our players were making a little joke there. They were calling for a judge on that last move, but it seems abundantly clear. So those two copies of Sycarius' Chosen are sitting here. This is going to set John up very favorably indeed. Uh, I can only imagine that uh, he's going to be sending all of his forces to that first planet. I'm not sure if there's really anything that our Eldar player could have in hand that could allow him to pull out a victory here. Uh, we see a rogue trader, which is going to be super important for winning resources. Um, and then, yeah, I suppose John has passed, so we two we see two rogue traders. So that's going to be a significant resource uh, income, something that definitely could allow our Eldar player to potentially win. Might be two copies of Gift of Isha to keep recurring this Warlock Destructor, and then if we can see a significant economic victory. I can only imagine Baharoth is going to be sent to planet number two, and John is going to be sent to planet number one, so it'll be really only one command struggle victory for our Space Marine player, and then that will set up uh, our Eldar for three. Yep, looks like John does indeed pick that first planet, and uh, our Eldar player picks planet number two. So... For grand total, looks like one resource to Cato, and then kind of a giant landslide of resources once again for our Eldar player. Baharoth is almost certainly going to be using his mobile action to the first planet. We only see a single resource for our Space Marine player, which means he can't fund Fury of Sicarius. He doesn't have enough for a drop pod assault. His I believe third and final copy it would be. He only has enough for an eager recruit. And uh, it looks like a grand total of three cards and five resources for Baharoth. So it is possible that he could come back. Um, so we'll have to see how combat ends up turning out. Initiative is going to end up going to... Baharoth, as soon as this battle starts, presuming he does use mobile to shift to the first planet. He's certainly got seven cards in hand. I assume some of those are shields. He can get in at least one swing. Even if his warlord does end up bloodied, it's probably not the end of the world, just because the game is in some cases uh, on the line here. Looks like John is potentially taunting <laughs> Dan by saying he doesn't mind if Baharoth joins at Planet One, but uh, as combat phase is starting, let's see what happens. Looks like Dan is presently considering his mobility options. Does he want to perhaps move to Farin to win by default to route a target non-warlord unit, or does he want to be risky and try to win the game? It looks like he does not. He ends up uh, shifting over to Farin, which means he's going to end up being able to route a unit, which really probably isn't going to do anything for him. The Warlock Destructor is being attacked by Captain Cato Sicarius, of course, who has initiative. It takes both points of damage, and I'm curious as to whether or not uh, we're going to see this just kind of thrown away or kept alive. I suppose at some point John did accrue an additional resource, so he's currently sitting at two, which is enough for Fury of Sicarius. It's enough for Drop Pot Assault. It's enough for two eager recruits. A whole host of different effects. We see the Warlock Destructor take a swing. Dan is currently trying to determine what target he'd like to attack. He ends up deciding on Kato, which is an interesting choice. Personally, I'd have maybe been inclined to go for veteran brother Maxos, just because these honored librarians are going to continue being a problem uh, really as long as they're in the Warlord's retinue, but Veteran Brother Maxos can continually uh, replenish our Space Marine Warlord's forces on the battlefield, so he could keep dropping in 10th Company scouts to absorb attacks to keep that Honored Librarian alive. And it looks like the end of the first combat round has occurred. John is staying, and... Uh, is Dan going to stay? Initiative is in the hands of our Space Marine player. Actually, it looks like we see Cato retreat after all. 
uh, or it looks like he's changed his mind, so Kato is not retreating. And is Dan going to be retreating? All right, looks like Dan chooses to retreat as well, which is going to bring us to the top of a brand new combat round. Veteran brother Maxos takes a swing at that Warlock Destructor, which uh, is an interesting choice, I suppose. It only attacks for two, so in all likelihood, uh, our Eldar player could use a shield icon to preserve its life, but he... Uh, chooses not to use that. So if he does Gift of Isha, he'll be able to attack, likely kill veteran brother Maxos, and then the Honored Librarian is set up nicely to kill uh, Warlock Destructor there. And it looks like the Warlock Destructor, I suppose Dan forgot that that means one resource for Captain Cato there. So at the present moment, five resources, seven cards for Baharoth, three resources, five cards for Cato. And it looks like John says he'd, he'd like to put a, a fellow into play. He's going to put Honored Librarian into play at that planet, which is going to be brought over to his HQ, and he does capture Yavarn. Oh, I'm sorry. I suppose he chose to trigger Yavarn's battle ability and put a unit into play in his HQ. We see a copy of Baharoth's Hawks enter the HQ of our Eldar player. So... Um, once again, Baharoth is frighteningly close to being bloodied, and as soon as he does happen to be bloodied, he's re he's exhausted, returned to the HQ, and then he immediately has to, uh, you know, lose that attack bonus. We see Baharoth win this planet, uh, win this battle at Farron uncontested, and he decides to rout a copy of Sicarius is chosen, so uh, it looks like at the present moment our Cato player is two planets away from victory if he wins Aatrox, our new first planet. If he also wins Farron, then he'll have three material icons and he will win the game. Our Eldar player has to either win at this next planet or um, he has to also win at Farron and Taurus. So I can only imagine Cato is probably going to be sending his forces to Farron to set himself up pretty favorably. We see a Blood Angels veterans join um, uh, the Sicarius is chosen at Aatrox Prime, set up a pretty daunting presence there. Currently nine resources, eight cards in hand for our Eldar player, four resources, five cards for Cato, and his headquarters is just absolutely full of all kinds of nasty units. Those honored librarians have a lot of different targets that need to be chewed through before anything nasty happens uh, to them. Baharoth's Hawks deployed to planet number two. I believe that's the third copy we've seen thus far. 30 cards left in the Eldar player's deck, 32 cards left in Kato's. So currently our Eldar player continues to win command at most planets. Um... It's almost certain that Aatrox Prime is going to be won by our Space Marine player, unless Baharoth sends himself there, which is entirely possible. But then that means that Kato is probably going to be going to Planet 2 and winning command at that location. Looks like we see yet another copy of Sicarius is Chosen, played at planet number three, and they're going to target that Baharoth's Hawks. So they're going to pull it away from planet number two, which means it can no longer use mobility to go to planet number one. Of course, we've seen both copies of the signature Cry the Wind used, so it's not going to be able to do that twice in one turn uh, planet moving effect. And I believe that's also our third copy of Sicarius is chosen, so that Baharoth's Hawks is rather wounded indeed, and um, yeah, things are looking a little grim, perhaps, for our Eldar player. He is going to have quite a bit of uh, command income, but we'll see if he has any hope of overcoming our our space marine. We see a shrouded harlequin, probably not used too often this unit. At planet number one, as soon as it's destroyed, a target enemy unit gets exhausted, so that's pretty nice to tap out one of these honored librarians if it happens to last that long. They're all going to be entering play uh, exhausted. I can only imagine it'll be showing up at planet two, though. 
So we see also alongside, no, we do see an Iand and Wraith Guard at planet number two. So depending on how uh, initiative rolls out, uh, that armor bane is pretty significant. As many times as it can attack, it's all, all but guaranteed to wipe out a space marine unit. But so long as veteran brother Maxos is there, he could keep putting you know, 10th Company Scouts into play to eat that four attack armor bane and spare those honored librarians. And that would allow Cato to retreat if he wants to avoid bloodying. Looks like both warlords are committing. I can only assume Cato at planet number two. No, I suppose Cato goes to planet number one. Um, which is kind of a curious choice for me. But... Uh, we see planet number two for Baharoth, so it looks like, yeah, just a big command win once again for our Eldar player, both of those rogue traders adding additional resource income, and nothing but this simple little shrouded harlequin sitting for the Eldar player, and that's going to be a fantastic opportunity for Captain Cato to generate yet another resource. We end up seeing Dan reel in two cards and six resources. John ends up getting one card, one resource, which puts our Eldar at seven resources, seven cards, and our Space Marine at two resources, five cards. Dan is going to use Mobile to shift Baharoth to planet uh, number three, which is Taurus. So he's going to be able to pull himself in some additional cards or resources if he does have fewer units, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like the Eldar player has seven relative to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for the Space Marine. So the Space Marine is already going to be uh, missing out on, you know, controlling Taurus more than likely, so he can relatively uh, comfortably just destroy this Shrouded Harlequin here. Aatrox Prime is going to be able to ping this Iand and Wraith Guard, though, and that's going to put it at but a single hit point, and uh, that's really not much. So, battle at the first planet. Kato, I guess, retreats right away, which seems like a kind of curious choice. And I suppose the Shrouded Harlequin takes a swing at veteran brother Maxos. I guess maybe the thought there was wanting to prevent like a, a gift of Isha or something to that effect. Veteran brother Maxos is actually killed outright by the Shrouded Harlequin. So five cards in hand for the Space Marine player. Uh, this is kind of a confusing outcome so far. The Shrouded Harlequin is going to be destroyed by Sicarius' Chosen, and of course, since the Shrouded Harlequin need not exhaust a unit at the same planet, it chooses to exhaust this copy of Sicarius' Chosen further down the line, which is going to give uh, our Eldar player a good opportunity to destroy Sicarius' Chosen. Aatrox Prime, the battle is going to be... Oh, looks like we see a Seer's... Exodus discarded as shields to spare the Iand and Wraith Guard, taking one damage. Uh, kind of a seldom played event, I believe. Uh, kind of allows the Eldar player to evacuate. We see Baharoth's Hawks at our next battle are taking a swing for three against that Sicarius' Chosen. I imagine John will let it die as opposed to just using up a bunch of shield cards. He plays one resource for an Indomitable. Uh, definitely nice cost value. Oh no, I guess he actually discards it. So he uses it purely as shields to uh, prevent one point of damage. So I can only imagine that Baharoth is going to be taking a swing at Sicarius' Chosen. No, he does retreat. He doesn't want to see a drop pot assault or eager recruit potentially bloody him. And uh, that is going to conclude our first, or the first combat round of this battle. Nothing but the rogue trader left to attack, and it does look like we see a drop pot assault. So Baharoth likely spared himself from being bloodied, but depending on what this drop pot assault pulls, is going to set our space marine up very favorably for destroying one of these hawks. We see a copy of oh. 
Tactical Squad Cardenas, which is going to be very, very nasty because both of these copies of Baharoth's Hawks are now at zero attack value. The Rogue Trader is at zero attack value, and that single area effect trigger could potentially kill one Hawk. It could potentially kill the Rogue Trader, and of course, it's going to nearly kill the second copy of Baharoth's Hawks. And seeing as how this next planet is in all likelihood going to decide the outcome of our game, Things are looking pretty grim. We do see that Baharoth's Hawks and Rogue Trader destroyed, and that is going to conclude our combat round. I can only imagine that uh, Baharoth is going to be retreating, and he does retreat, so looks like there's quite the discrepancy between players here. Of course, Captain Cato has far, far more units, so even though he wins this battle at Taurus, he by no means can trigger it. We see our headquarters phase start, and going into our, in all likelihood, last round of the game, we see 11 resources, 8 cards for our Eldar player. He's really got to play some special stuff with those, and 4 resources, 5 cards for our Space Marines. So a dis tremendous discrepancy there, but also when you you look at the armed forces here on the battlefield, uh, absolutely enormous discrepancy. I believe that's our fourth and final copy of Baharoth's Hawks being played at planet number two, and that could potentially allow um, uh, Baharoth to trump the command presence of our Space Marine player, but I can only imagine that um, we're going to see Kato at the first planet, Baharoth at planet number two, so our Space Marine is going to likely earn some resources, and then the rest of this is almost certainly going to be going to our Eldar player. So I'm sure that we'll be seeing a ton of combat tricks from our Eldar player. I believe we've seen almost all of our Space Marines events uh, used up at this point. 28 cards remaining in John's deck, 26 in Dan's. We do see a 10th Company Scout deployed to the first planet, which is more fodder to spare the Honored Librarian here. One of the weaknesses of the Eldar deck as a whole is a lack of area effect, and I think that's really, really going to hurt Dan right now. And unless he has a copy of the extremely expensive Autark Salakia, he's really going to be facing an uphill battle here uh, just because this is so many Space Marine units and so much HP to chew through. We do see another copy of the Iand and Wraith Guard interplay at the first planet. Fortunately, the resource token is going to be in the hands of our um, Eldar player because he's going to need all the help that he can get. We see a Void Pirate played opposite our Eldar player's Rogue Trader, which is going to be great in potentially depriving uh, Dan of two resources and one card. But of course, we do see a Bealtan Guardians, which now trumps the command at the third planet, so he can guarantee that he's going to be making back not just the card that the Bealtan Guardians cost, but that resource as well, and a bonus additional resource in addition further. So, in regard to deploy, we've currently got two resources. Zero resources, two cards. We see another tactical squad, Cardenas, played by our Space Marine player at planet number two. That's kind of an interesting choice for planet two. I guess he really wants to win back some resources, but seeing as how Baharoth is almost certainly going to be sent to planet number two, it seems like that would have been better deployed to planet number one, especially now that we see a third and final copy of the Iand and Wraith Guard uh, deployed to planet number one. Area effect one would be absolutely fantastic, and our Eldar player is down to zero resources, three cards relative to the Space Marine, zero resources, two cards. So looks like everything is currently on the table. Looks like for uh, committing warlords, I can only imagine planet number one for Kato, planet number two for Baharoth, just so we can mobile over to planet number one. Baharoth is almost certainly going to be bloodied during the final combat of the game. Um, whether or not that happens to Kato, who knows? These Iand and Wraithguard are extremely nasty, Interestingly, we don't see any area effect units for our Space Marine player at this final fight, but certainly there's going to be a lot of bloodshed, uh, and this is in all likelihood going to win the game. If Kato is the victor, if he captures this planet, then it's all over. The earliest that our Eldar player can now win is our new third planet, so 
if our Eldar player can manage to pull through this one, it's going to be a very, very long uphill battle. And we do actually see our Space Marine do something a little bit more conservative than I was expecting. This definitely takes me by surprise, but we see Kato go to planet number two, which of course sets him up extraordinarily favorably for the following turn, um, because he'll have all kinds of area effect. These Iand and Wraith Guard are going to be, you know, entering play exhausted. Looks like Dan is uh, <laughs> complaining that he didn't manage to draw Doom, which is a little bit of a, a tip of the hat in regard to what he has in his deck. Looks like our Eldar player is the only one that's going to be winning any resources here. I was very much expecting that this fight would, uh, that the game would conclude here. I suppose uh, John is just playing it extremely safe, extremely conservative, wanting to play around Gift of Isha, all sorts of nastiness like that. We see Baharoth's Hawks and Mobile Away to planet number three and we see another hawk mobile away to planet number three just to try to conserve as many forces as possible. Baharoth goes over to planet number one, leaving this rogue trader alone to be destroyed. We end up seeing Dan rake in one card and four resources, and uh, that's basically that. I suppose they, they must have tied at command for the second planet. We see the Iand and Wraith Guard absolutely obliterate that comp copy of 10th Company Scout, no resources whatsoever for our Space Marine, two cards in hand. We see tense negotiations, Baharoth exhausts, and he triggers, he's basically going to be able to trigger this ability twice, so the Honored Librarians, well, at least one Honored Librarian, and then I assume probably the other is going to be routed. It uh, will be curious to see, you know, whether you are getting rid of the librarians or whether you are getting rid of the tactical squad. They're both extraordinarily nasty, considering these Wraith Guard only have two hit points. Um, and then we'll see what exactly Eldar chooses to route here. Is it going to be that second copy of the Honored Librarian? Is it going to be a tactical squad? It is indeed going to be another copy of the Librarian. So both of these tactical squads are going to be unexhausted and ready to do area effect volleys directed toward these Wraith Guard. And they, of course, are going to be entering play exhausted. This is going to be a tremendous fight at this next planet, but... You know, if these Baharoth's Hawks mobile in, they've only got two hit points. One of them already has a point of damage. Even with a bunch of copies of Gift of Isha in his hand, if he can save the resources to play those, that area effect is going to be hugely punishing, so it may have been a better choice to get rid of those area effect units. We see Sycarius is chosen, attack that rogue trader, it gets destroyed, which allows Kato to generate another resource. I believe we've seen each and every copy of his drop pot assault played. He still has one copy of the Fury of Sycarius, but that isn't going to make much of any difference, seeing as how few hit points these units have remaining. But we could see more eager recruits. We could see another copy of veteran brother Maxos bringing in all kinds of units. We could just see a bunch of additional units. There are no additional combats to be taking place during this round. And that's going to bring us to headquarters in just a moment. We see just a giant, giant amount of space marine units. All kinds of Wraith Guard with Baharoth. Seven resources, five cards for Eldar. Five resources, four cards for our Space Marine. And this final planet battle is looking awfully crazy. Whichever player wins is actually going to end up taking the victory here. Sotaris has one material icon. Either player is going to be able to win the game on that planet. We see a 10th company scout, one hit point, two attack value, but without any kind of area effect, that's really, really going to hurt for our uh, Eldar player. Things are looking very, very grim. If he did happen to pull a copy of Doom, he can destroy those two honored librarians, which would be nice, but it's still not necessarily going to make a an, an gigantic difference. Both warlords are all but certain to be... Uh, you know, deploying to the first planet. I imagine if for nothing else, Baharoth is going to want to try to prevent Kato from going to that planet. I suppose Kato could go to planet number two, um, 
we saw a tense negotiations hit the table and then back to the hand. I guess he changed his mind. A Vashia Trailblazer goes to planet number one. It looks like John passes. He's down to one resource and two cards. Just has a giant number of units sitting out here on the table. We see Dan pass as well. So at the present moment, he's all but certain to win command at uh, this final planet. But a lot of it is all going to come down to where the warlords are sent. I could see John going to either planet, but definitely, you know, why wouldn't he go to planet number one, I guess? It all comes down to this. Baharoth might go to planet number two, more than likely planet number one. Or, yes, of course he's going to go to planet number one to get those Wraith Guard into play. I was thinking uh, if he maybe wanted to win command or something. But, yes, both players are at planet number one, and it's all going to come down to this. That is a hell of a lot of ready Space Marine units. The initiative is in Captain Kato Sicarius's hand. He's got an honored librarian ready. We're going to see John win one uh, card, one resource, and it looks like uh, Dan has yet to draw in that bonus that he'd have won via Karnath. I went ahead and reminded our players there just to interfere in my godlike way, um, and it's all going to come down to this. So... One Honored Librarian is standing. We've got two Tactical Squad Cardinuses standing. Looks like I must have missed it. Uh, they can both do area effect. We've got three Wraith Guard that are exhausted. They've only got two hit points. Baharoth only has two remaining hit points. One of the Baharoth's Hawks is at one hit point, and then one of them is six attack with three. We could very easily see this Honored Librarian take the first swing to blow up this six attack Baharoth's Hawks. I can only imagine that's what's going to happen. I suppose he could also bloody Baharoth, and then that'll mean this Baharoth's Hawks drops to zero attack, then that would be at three attack. I suppose personally, oh, we'd see a tense negotiations. So just doing a real quick unit count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for our Eldar player. And looks like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve for Kato. So our Eldar player draws three cards. He must probably be digging for something like a Gift of Isha, and that leaves Baharoth exhausted, so he's not going to be able to retreat, not that it really matters. He's all but certain to get bloodied very early on. And it looks like we're still waiting to start this battle here. So the battle is going to begin... We see an Empower played by our Eldar player, so each and every unit is going to get plus one attack and plus one HP, which is going to be absolutely crucial in keeping these Wraith Guard alive. Both tactical squads can do their area effect volley, and now these Wraith Guard are going to survive as opposed to being destroyed. We only have two resources, five cards for our Eldor, Eldar player, two resources, three cards for our Space Marine. Tactical squad Cardenas does the first First area effect volley at Taurus. We see Vashia Trailblazer destroyed, and all of those damage tokens are going to be doled out. This empower means that each of these units is going to be attacking for at least something. Each and every Wraith Guard has an attack value of 5 Armor Bane at present, and even as soon as Baharoth is bloodied or retreats, um, then these Baharoth's Hawks are still attacking for something. This untapped one is going to be attacking for seven. I'm curious as to whether it's going to be destroying this other copy of Tactical Squad. I can only imagine it will, but then I can also only imagine that, uh, there's an Indomitable sitting in our Space Marine player's hand. He's only got 25 cards left in his deck. He's got three, ro three resources, three cards. We've only seen one of those gone. So that's probably going to spare that tactical squad. But uh, let's see here. Looks like John is indicating he is done. And what does our Baharoth choose to attack? I'm predicting an attack toward the tactical squad that ends up getting indomitabled. Anything else seems essentially as if it can be thrown away. 
we do see this seven attack Baharoth's Hawks swing at. We see it swing at Kato. So trying to get him off of the planet. Captain Kato is bloodied, which he must be saving those copies of Indomitable for area effect. The combat initiative still remains in his hand. And I really don't think that's much of a loss at all for John. He's not going to collect resources, but in all likelihood, he probably doesn't need them. He's still got plenty to fund eager recruits. We've seen all of his drop pod assaults. We see our second volley of area effect, and that's going to be a hell of a lot of damage being dished out. We see a discard of Fortel to spare this uh, copy of Baharoth's Hawks being destroyed outright, so it's going to be able to get in yet another attack for a grand total of four uh, before everything is over here. Baharoth is currently at uh, six damage, but seeing as how he's an Eldar unit, he's just as affected as anything else is by that Empower, so he's not bloodied quite yet. We see an Ion Rifle spare one point of damage uh, to one of these Wraith Guard. Kind of a curious choice. Um, I imagine he maybe would have held on to that, but we'll see if it ends up making a big difference. It's now our Eldar player's opportunity to attack. The only thing he's got left is this copy of Baharoth's Hawks. He doesn't have enough resources at the moment to play another copy of Empower, which would be the third and final we've seen in his deck, if memory serves. Baharoth's Hawks is likely going to be taking a swing at a Blood Angel's Veterans, which would not actually be enough to kill it. Oh, I'm sorry. It, of course, is attacking for four. And we see a Talisarian Tempest Blade discarded, so that drops the damage to one. As Blood Angel's Veterans is ready, uh, it's going to prevent one damage, so it ends up taking a grand total of zero. And now we have five, uh, six ready Space Marine units to attack. And this is where things start to look absolutely terrible for our Eldar player. As soon as Baharoth is gone, this copy of the Hawks only has one single attack. And Baharoth is going to get attacked. So we see Sykerius is chosen here attacking Baharoth. And it looks like uh, the players call out good game. It looks like at this point Dan is indeed uh, conceding. He was ending the game here with two resources three cards in hand. Looks like our Space Marine player had three resources and two cards in hand. I can only imagine that uh, John had Indomitables left to protect and preserve the tactical squads here, so I suppose I'll just uh, end up Well, I suppose actually our, our players are still playing it out uh, just to humor me for this for this video here. So just to finish resolving the battle, I suppose Baharoth was successfully bloodied. Our 10th Company Scout destroys that uh, copy of Baharoth's Hawks that happened to have um, an attachment on it. So we see a Sycarius has chosen blow up another copy of a Baharoth's Hawks, and now at this point it's just an absolute onslaught. All of our Space Marine units, there were a grand total of six left on Exhausted, and now they're just picking off all the different Iand and Wraith Guards, so at this point the battle is completely you know, depleted of armed forces, and now it is very much a final good game. So, I'll just end this video once again by saying thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already, or if you are already subscribed, I'd very humbly encourage you to share this content, as the more viewers eventually see videos like this, the more potential players we draw to the game, and if they like what they see, if they're excited by Conquest, if they enjoy it, if they like it, it's all the more more likely that they'll start playing, they'll join our community, and they'll send a message to Fantasy Flight Games with their wallet, telling our beloved company to keep supporting this game. So, if you liked what you saw, if you want to keep in touch with me, if you'd like updates regarding videos, regarding new content, be sure to check me out on Twitter and Facebook, and as ever, I'd be absolutely honored if you'd visit my Patreon and help me recoup some of my file hosting and operating costs. So, once again, thank you so much for watching, and as always, Always, be sure to check back in again soon for ever more Conquest LCG content 
to come.